Welcome to Focus Today. I'm your host, Perry Atkinson, and I'm delighted to have with us uh, on the program again today, Ted Schubot. He's the son of Wallet Schubot, a former PLO terrorist. And so Ted can speak to us firsthand about terrorism and things that are going on. He's authored two books at a young age. His first book at the age of 16, In Satan's Footsteps, and now his uh, new book or latest book, uh, For God or for Tyranny. And I like the subtitle of that uh, uh, Ted, because you talk about when nations deny God's natural law. How are you, friend? Good to see you back. I'm very good. Yourself, sir? Hey, doing great. Thanks for your time. I value it greatly. No problem. Hey, listen, what do you think of all of this stuff going on in the United States about the attack against the Second Amendment and trying to disarm Americans? Well, as, as everyone who's reading up on the controversy knows, Obama wants to ban semi-automatic weapons. He said that himself. He said he wants to put forward a package and that he is going to be putting his full weight on it. So he is very fervent about outlawing semi-automatic weapons. Now, semi-automatic weapons would imply rifles and regular pistols, a uh, type of weapons that many Americans here own. So here's the thing. Obama wants to ban semi-automatic weapons, yet he is providing semi-automatic weapons and full automatic weapons to the Syrian rebels in the revolution currently going on against Bashar al-Assad. Mm -hmm. Here's the question. Why do Americans need to be disarmed, but Syrians need rifles? Why do Americans, uh, 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 why shouldn't Americans have rifles, uh, but Syrians should have rifles, is the question. And so when you look at the, the hypocrisy of the left, you find out that they want to disarm us, but they want to arm jihadists. Uh, yeah. No, uh, uh, let me just kind of cut to the bottom line question here, and I know you can go crazy with this question, but yeah. why do you think this president is so pro-Islamic? It's a very good question, and the way I would like to answer that is this. The uh, Obama administration is part of the left, and for the, the left for hundreds of years has sympathized with the Islamic cause. You can go back to the French Revolution, and you can find philosophers sympathizing, such as Rousseau, uh, Jean-Jacques Rousseau, the father of modern-day leftism, sympathizing with the Islamic cause, yet at the same time hating Christianity. So why is that? Because Christianity, as I say in my book, For God or For Tyranny, Christianity is the greatest threat to all tyranny. Look at the Bible, chapter uh, 11 of Genesis. Uh, God disperses the people because they are collectivists, because they're all together. They're not individuals. He, he scatters them abroad. He confounds their languages. God is anti-tyranny. So the biggest threat to collectivism, the biggest threat to expanded government is an independent people. So if you have Christianity thriving in a society, it's going to be very difficult for a tyranny to thrive on those people. So the, the reason why they want to get rid of the Second Amendment is the same reason why any tyrant would want to get rid of the Second Amendment, to make the people dependent on the state and not on themselves. If you look at the, uh, the arms deals that Obama has been doing with the Syrian revolution, his administration has sold over $33 billion worth of weapons, another $1.7 billion to Qatar, knowing full well that those weapons were transferred by the Saudis into the hands of jihadists uh, in Syria. In fact, one American official who goes anonymous said this. He said the opposition groups that are receiving the most of the lethal aid, lethal aid, are exactly the ones we don't want to have it, meaning the, the United States knows where these weapons are going. Also, the Obama administration has, and, and this is in public records, this is in public news, Obama administration has been involved in shipping rifles and grenades to the Syrian rebels. And the Syrian rebels have used these weapons to tyrannize civilians, including Christians. Well, let us not forget, included in that packet were some F-16s, and I'm sure Israel's sitting there watching this whole thing. Uh, you know, kind of strolling their their uh, fingernails on the table, waiting to figure out what's next. Uh, it's just amazing. Um, well, Ted, um, look, uh, part of this equation is um, the faith community in America seems to be deaf and silent to this whole thing. And yet, yeah. you, I loved your answer, uh, your first answer uh, about tyranny and how God opposes tyranny. And yet we seem to be doing nothing. I, and, and that's why I love to tell people, when, when I go to these churches in America, I tell them, what is the Bible all about? Is the Bible about self-esteem? Is it about self-confidence? Was Jesus Christ an ancient version of Tony Robbins? 
No, but pe- but the uh, the modern day church in Europe and in the United States, they are making the Bible out to be a personal self help book, and that's not the way that's not the way I see it, and that's not what it is. If you read if you read the scripture, the scriptures is a the scriptures are a manual. The Bible is a manual of of how to fight against evil. All the stories, whether it be Gideon, whether it be Samson, whether it be Moses uh, confronting the Pharaoh, whether it be the Tower of Babel, all of these stories are men fighting against evil institutions, whether it be Moses versus the Pharaoh, whether it be Gideon versus the Midianites, whether it be Samson versus the Temple of Gadon, whether it be Jesus Christ on the cross destroying the works of Satan, as St. John said in his epistle. All of these stories are men being zealous for the faith and being zealous against evil. Let's not forget what it says in, in the book of Numbers. Phineas kills the Hebrews who worship the Midianite gods. And God, does God say, Phineas, you were very intolerant today. Phineas, you had no grace. No, he says, because of the zealotry of Phineas, I have spared the entire nation of Israel. So the church needs to be about zealotry. Christians need to become zealous for the faith or else... This tolerance obsession, this obsession with tolerance and loving all religions, as the church has Mm -hmm. adopted very much so, will destroy us. It'll engulf us. Well, we have successfully retreated to our church, called that a safe place. We're actually hiding in there and pointing at the world and all these problems as some kind of, uh, well, that's the bad thing and that's just the enemy and it's end times that's going to happen. It just hasn't translated even into evangelism. No, in fact... um, uh, in regards to evangelism, when I tell people, when, you, when you're talking to Muslims, when you're talking to Mormons or any non-believer, you need to know about those religions to tell the person, hey, this religion you're believing, this is what it says. And I, I was shocked how many Christians would disagree with me on this. They would say, well, Ted, that's not grace-like. You're going to lose the person. If you don't confront evil ideologies, and if you sit there and be uh, sensitive to all these religions continuously, I'm not saying be a jerk, right. but I'm saying if you're not confronting these religions honestly, then the, the people that you're preaching to, they're never going to think. And part of evangelism is making people think, yeah. not making people feel comfortable. All right, I want to come back to uh, the, the, the subject at hand and, and the arming yeah. of, uh, of, of, of all of these different groups that are out there. We know that this president, this administration is not pro-Israel. I mean, we'd have to be pretty dumb to think that it's anything else but anti-Israel. And yet, at the same time, now he is funneling guns and semiotic weapons and, and F-16s over to, uh, to Syria. Do you think, ultimately, this president wants to arm uh, the Muslim Brotherhood? Well, he's already arming them. I mean, look at the fact that he's sending, sending tanks and, and uh, fighter jets to the Egyptians. He's sending billions of dollars to the new Egyptian government to help support them, supposedly, which is ran by a terrorist organization. And for people who say well, that the Muslim Brotherhood is not a big deal, let me tell you, 9-11 is a product of the Muslim Brotherhood. Osama bin Laden is a product of the Muslim Brotherhood. Zarahawi is a product of the Muslim Brotherhood. Zarqawi is a, pro- is a product of the Muslim Brotherhood. All 19 hijackers of the airplanes which struck the Twin Towers, which killed 3,000 people, all of those guys were influenced and products uh, ideologically, that is, of the Muslim Brotherhood. So don't say the Muslim Brotherhood is not a problem. It is. It's a major threat. In fact, if you look at the works of uh, Muhammad Akram, who was a high-level me- member of the Muslim Brotherhood, what he wrote in 1991 and in the manifesto for the organization, that the purpose of the Brotherhood is to infiltrate the United States, to destroy Western civilization from within, and to make Islam the superior religion in, in the United States. That's what he said. Uh, and also, going back to Syria, Who are the most armed people in Syria right now? The military, the second most armed, the terrorists, the the third at least armed, the civilians. The civilians are the ones who are helpless. They're the biggest victims. Now, a pilot to the United States, a pilot to America. If you neutralize the Second Amendment, it's going to be the military the most armed, the criminals the second most armed, and the civilians the most defenseless. Same situation in Syria. The criminals are being empowered in, in Syria thanks to the works of the Obama administration, thanks to the arms deals that John Brennan and, and Chris, Ambassador Christopher Stevens were doing before he was murdered. Uh, thanks to all of these acts, the Free Syrian Army, which is the major rebellion group in Syria right now, is the most armed jihadist group in the Middle East. And they are slaughtering Christians as we speak in Syria. So this is a very, very dangerous move. And what the politicians are doing in support of the Free Syrian Army, as far as I'm concerned, is 
pure evil. All right. Uh, it's possible we're going to get a Hegel for a defense secretary. Brennan headed the CIA, and you already got John Kerry out there now running around as the new secretary of state. What does that mean to you? Uh, well, to me, they're all corrupt, and politicians are not to be trusted. Many people put their lives and depend on politicians, and so what it means to me is uh, another politician to watch out for and to watch his actions and to be a, a watchman on the wall, really. Be on the lookout. Don't ever trust politicians. So why are we so pro-Islamic with this administration? Well, I mean, philosophically, take me, where are you, why is this happening? Why is the obvious happening? Well, it's, it's, to me, it's this. It, it, this is how it works. The le people say, well, the left and the Islamists, they're working together based on ignorance because leftism is radically different from Islamism. And in my book, For God for Tyranny, I completely disprove this. Leftism and Islamism are very, very similar. The reason why the left and the terrorists are allying together is not because of ignorance, but because of a common goal, and that is the destruction of Western civilization. Look at the works of Jean-Jacques Rousseau, the father of liberalism. He stated quite clearly that the ideas of Islam are very sane. The ideas for society in Islam are very sane. Look at the works of, of Hegel, one of the great German philosophers, very popular in leftist circles. Hegel stated that the beauty of Islam is its collectivism, the idea that all human beings will come together under one language, Arabic, and under one ideology, Islam, and in one great temple, the Kaaba in Mecca, Tower of Babel. Mm. So the, the left and the Islamists both want this, uni, this universal utopia, socialistic universal utopia. And in order to establish that, you have to get rid of Christianity, because Christianity teaches that collectivism is evil, that universal, universal utopia is yeah. evil, unless it's done by God himself, Christ. Excellent. So it, Excellent. if you want to establish tyranny, you have to get rid of Christianity. How do people get a copy of your book, Ted, quickly? You can go on Amazon.com, and the name of the book is For God or For Tyranny. Let me encourage you to get a copy. Of, there's a picture of it there on the screen. Get a copy of it. Ted, thank you. I'll have you back again and again. No Love problem, your passion. Sir. Keep up the good work, my friend. You too, sir. God bless. God Thanks bless. for having me on. All right. We'll be right back.